everyone, I'm Rincey and this is Rincey Reads. Today I'm going to be doing a book review on A Girl of Nightmares by Kendara Blake. This is the sequel to Anna Dressed in Blood and if you haven't read Anna Dressed in Blood definitely do not watch this review. Instead go check out my review of Anna Dressed in Blood because there will be spoilers for the first book in this review. But if you haven't read Girl of Nightmares yet this will be completely spoiler free for the plot. Girl of Nightmares picks up a few months after the big battle that happens at the end of Anna Dressed in Blood where Anna basically sacrifices herself in order to save Cass. Ever since that event, Cass has basically been seeing Anna everywhere he goes. He has nightmares where he can see her being tortured, he sees her faces in the people around him and in the situations that he's in. When he goes and fights other ghosts or goes ghost hunting, he sees Anna in those situations. It is really hindering his overall mental health. A lot of people think he's just going through some sort of post-traumatic stress type of situation, but he is actually really worried that Anna is not in a good place and is being tortured or harmed in some way, and he is just really determined to try to get Anna back. If you guys saw my review of Anna Just in Blood, I really love that book. It was one of my favorite books that I read last year, and I was very much looking forward to read this book. This book very much keeps the same tone and style as Anna Just in Blood. Cass is angsty in this book because of everything that happened in the first book, but it is like a good amount of angst. Like if he wasn't that way, I would worry a little bit about him because he should have some sort of reaction to everything that happened in the first book, so I actually enjoyed it, but it wasn't too much that I was really annoyed with him, like, you know, Harry in the fifth book of the series. I really enjoyed the way that Cass is sort of dealing with the situation of everything that happened and the way he's so determined to figure out what really happened to Anna and to try to save her. And I like how they counteract that with the rest of the characters who either doubt him or are trying to help him in some way. But I have to say that this book didn't capture me quite as much as Anna Dressed in Blood did. I think it's because in Anna Dressed in Blood, Cass is constantly either killing ghosts or he's searching for Anna or doing things like that or, you know, trying to fight Anna. There's a lot of action that really pulls you in. This one feels a lot slower paced because he isn't really ghost hunting as much in this book. And so a lot of it is just him trying to figure out what's going on with Anna. So it's much more of just searching and researching and talking to people and trying to figure stuff out. You also meet a couple of new characters in this book, which is to be expected, but it isn't so many new characters that they overwhelm the book. I think it's a good introduction of new characters. I was really intrigued by Justine. I think that her character was handled really well. It showed her in a very complex light. You would see things that would make you want to side with her and then you would see other things that would make you suspicious of her. And I think that Kendall Blake did a really good job of making sure that you didn't exactly know what was going on with her at all times. There were situations where I was really irritated with her, but I think overall she was a really good addition into this book. I have to say though that the ending was a little bit underwhelming. I feel like I finished this book with a lot of questions and I won't say what those questions are here because I don't want to spoil anything but there were a lot of things that happened at the end that didn't completely make sense to me and those questions are one of the things that made me not love it quite as much as Anna Dressed in Blood. I was one of those people that thought Anna Dressed in Blood could have been a standalone novel and been perfect and so when I knew there was the sequel I was a little bit hesitant but I feel like this does a pretty good job of adding to the story without making you feel like a, it was an unnecessary sequel and I think the way they ended the story was also in a way that there could potentially be more books in the future but it still ends. One of the problems that I had with Anna Just in Blood that kind of carried over into this one is I didn't enjoy the whole romance aspect of the book. Um, the fact that Cass falls in love with Anna is a really difficult thing for me to wrap my head around and so it carries over into this book and I tried to ignore it as much as possible but it is slightly more prominent since this book is mostly about Cass trying to save Anna and so his feelings very much come into account for that. In the end, I gave this book a three and a half out of five stars on Goodreads. I'm giving it a three out of five stars because it didn't quite live up to my levels of expectations from Anna Dressed in Blood and it didn't pull me in quite as much. I think Anna Dressed in Blood I read in like a day or two and this one took me a little bit longer just because I wasn't quite as pulled in 
as I was the first time around, but I still really, really enjoyed it. And if you liked Anna Justin Blood, definitely you have to pick this one up and just finish off. I definitely don't think that this will decrease your love of the series at all. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Girl of Nightmares by Kendara Blake. If you read this book, feel free to leave your comments down below letting me know what you thought of this book. Or if you've read Anna Dress in Blood but haven't read this one yet, let me know if you plan on picking this one up or not. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.